you see behind me is Prima H2, an FCEV truck. It's 28 tons. Yeah. And to talk more about Tata Motors commercial vehicle plants, their EVs and their different type of electric vehicles that they are planning to get. I have Mr. Girish Vag with me. Thank you Hello. so much, Girish, for joining Pleasure. us today. Uh, you know, this H2 truck, I want to ask, uh, by when do you, do you think that uh, this uh, FCEV will something that becomes a norm uh, in Indian market? Because I believe uh, hydrogen fuel cell is something which is more convenient and more suitable for uh, long, big trucks like this. So, I think this is a hydrogen internal combustion engine truck. Okay. And to give a context, mm -hmm. as a part of the hydrogen mission plan of the government, mm -hmm. they have also come up with a hydrogen pilot. Mm -hmm. And they have awarded us uh, the contract to actually run hydrogen internal combustion engine trucks on three routes in the country. And we are going to work with IOCL, who is going to be our partner for the fueling infrastructure. So these three routes are Delhi, NCR, then we are looking at Ahmedabad, Rajkot, and we are looking at Mumbai, Pune. And there's a four, fourth route also being evaluated, which is Jamshedpur, Kalinganagar in the east. Mm -hmm. So we are going to run around 15 trucks, right, on these routes for around 12 to 18 months, okay. uh, where IOCL will also put up their uh, infrastructure for refueling. And a lot of data will be generated from this on hydrogen which will be then used as a part of what should be the next steps for a hydrogen mission plan. But since you also spoke about fuel cell, yeah. so I think for last one year or so, we've also been running around 15 uh, fuel cell electric buses, again with IOCL in Delhi and few other places. Okay, and how has the response been? How has the, what, the, what is the, uh, do you think they can be adopted easily by in, in India? So, uh, it can certainly be adopted mm -hmm. now easily is a relative term because yeah. you know every technology has to go through its maturity uh, cycle yeah. and I would say that hydrogen from that perspective is in the early stages we need to get economies of scale in green hydrogen manufacturing we need to get economies in distribution and then I think as the number of vehicles also increase we will get economies of scale there also but it does appear that for long distance heavy duty uh, hydrogen still appears to be a better solution yeah. because batteries do have a limitation yeah the ev batteries do have a limitation yeah. so uh, let me first first of all i was mistaken i thought this is a hydrogen fuel cell but this is an ice so that's a new technology that's coming up um, how how convenient are evs for adoption in say uh, long distance commercial vehicles so, Especially the big ones, because yeah. uh, the smaller ones you can still manage because they don't have that much load. These are heavy load carrying buses, the uh, yeah. trucks, that big ones. So heavy duty long haul applications with battery electric, uh, with the current technology, the cell technology available does have a limitation. Mm -hmm. Because if you need good range, then you need to go on increasing the size of the battery. And then that increases the curb weight and therefore reduces the payload. And that's where you know hydrogen steps in. Hydrogen fuel being uh, stored in liquid form actually has lower weight, lesser space occupied and therefore it makes sense. Mm. But this technology has its different set of challenges which we as industry and along with the other uh, industries we need to solve that. But battery electric does have its uh, usage in heavy duty vehicles also which are specifically for short haul applications. Yeah. So take port applications or take steel industry for Basically example. hub and spoke model works better for, for EVs, uh, do uh, you think, where, where there's like a hub and then they have to do shorter, and limited distances. Yes, yeah, so all short haul, mm -hmm. defined route where the vehicle can come back, you know, are very good applications. So in fact, we have also shown the 55 ton uh, battery electric tractor, mm -hmm. which is going to be now sold commercially, mm -hmm. right? And we have been discussing with clients in steel and cement uh, industry, even yeah. ports, yeah. because it will make a lot of sense for them to decarbonize their scope 3 emissions. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, one crucial part of commercial vehicle is also the turnaround time. And EVs typically take, uh, the bigger the battery, the longer they will take to charge. So how uh, do you see a pro solution to that problem coming anytime soon? And what, what can be that solution? Yeah, I think with the improvement in technology, consistently 
the charging times have been coming down, right? So the charging rate, which is called a C rating, has been continuously increasing. And in fact, this year in Hanover Motor Show, we also saw, saw that uh, there are new battery cell technologies which are coming with very high C rating. So I think there is a good development which is consistently happening. And I'm sure that I think some of these challenges which are there will certainly get addressed. You know, um, we talked about so many technologies and they all are developing at, uh, and they're all, they all have their own challenges and their own um, uh, investment requirements. So uh, what are your investment plans? Um, uh, how are you deciding where, where to bet on and uh, where to put your energies uh, in? See, I think uh, uh, after the BS6 phase 2 transition, uh, very clearly the percentage of our total investment which is going into the new technologies whether it is uh, alternate fuels whether it is battery electric hydrogen or it is about software now it is all digital and connectivity solutions it is about ADAS for safety I think the allocation to these technologies has been increasing and we have been spending now almost 40 to 45 percent of our capex mm -hmm. on these new technologies and uh, what is your capex if i may ask for next couple of so years so our total capex is is generally around uh, the range of two, 2000 odd crores mm -hmm. and we we will continue to manage in that zone as the technology is progressing uh, where do you uh, personally think that uh, that that can be a winner for cv uh, cv uh, um, trucks and cv business see i think uh, the position that we are in today as an industry, we have to invest in all the technologies. Mm -hmm. But I think Indian engineers are, uh, I would say, quite comfortable with frugal engineering and that's something which is helping us. But coming to Tata Motors, I would say we have been investing in CNG, LNG. Uh, you know, in fact, we have also demonstrated a biodiesel vehicle. So we are working on that also. Uh, CNG has seen a good penetration with improvement in availability of CNG and also uh, surety about the pricing structure of CNG. So mm -hmm. CNG has been increasing. In uh, long haul heavy duty trucks, LNG is coming in. Yeah. And in fact, if we see China, now within a year, 35% of their long haul trucks have gone on to LNG mm -hmm. because of uh, uh, you know consistency in pricing and the kind of decarbonization to the whatever extent it provides. So I think uh, we are also ready with LNG. We've already sold uh, 40 odd trucks and there is a good demand for that. But at the same time, I think the destination technology is certainly zero emission, which is battery electric and hydrogen. And we continue to work on that. And in fact, if you see in this Bharat Mobility Global Expo, out of the 14 exhibits, six are battery electric and one is uh, hydrogen. So you can see seven yeah. are zero emission technologies yeah yeah you know uh, let's talk about what's happening in the market currently i believe last couple of quarters were a uh, flatish for you uh, after a good start uh, so uh, now what are your expectations from uh, 2025 um, do you see a replacement demand coming back um, we saw a little bit of a disturbance after that bs6 transition now now what are you expecting I think uh, this financial year, we started actually on a good note in yeah. Q1. Yeah. The expectation was that the Q1 will see a decline because of the general elections. Mm -hmm. But actually Q1 see, saw single digit growth. But Q2 did see uh, a decline, significant double digit decline because of heavy rains. Uh, there was almost stoppage in mining operations. Then infrastructure projects went into a slowdown. So I think uh, there was a decline. Q3 also didn't start on a such a strong note, but towards the end of Q3, one has started seeing some green shoots. There has been uh, demand growth happening in certain areas. At a larger level, if you see this year, buses and vans as a category has grown in nine months. Uh, small vehicles and intermediate light vehicles have remained flat or slight decline. Heavy commercial vehicles is what has seen the decline. Mm -hmm. But we track some lead metrics yeah. like the distance traveled by the heavy commercial vehicles because we have our fleet solution 
operating in more than 750,000 trucks now. So on a daily basis, we come to know what is the distance traveled by the trucks or how many hours a tipper is running. And there, the data is already seen positive. So in Q4, we are running ahead of Q3. And Q4 of this year is almost same as Q4 of last year or in fact slightly ahead. Okay. So these are some green shoots that I'm seeing and therefore how Q4 pans out is going to be important. If Q4 pans out to be flat with respect to the last year, I think that should be, I would say, a good footing for beginning of the next financial year, which is FY26. Okay, uh, now budget is round the corner. What are your expectations from budget? I think, see, uh, budget has not remained the only event, if I may say so, yeah. where the industry requirements are being addressed. Yeah. I think the, the government has been doing a lot of interventions to support uh, especially the sustainability transition to automotive industry. So whether it is the FAME incentive to begin with, then uh, we had the PM e-bus seva, the PLI incentive which is on the supply side, and now PM e-drive is in the works yeah. to have incentives on the heavy duty vehicles. So there's a lot of work which is happening here and uh, we expect this to continue. The second uh, which has been very good that despite uh, major geopolitical events, the diesel prices have remained stable and this therefore you know depending upon the vehicle the fuel cost is almost 30 to 50 55 percent of the total cost so this remaining stable is providing good kind of uh, comfort to the fleet operator fleet operators and therefore there is this is another thing which is good i think third thing every commercial vehicle almost is sold on uh, a loan right and therefore if the interest rates soften then it will be good for the industry all right, Mr. Bhatt. Thank you Thank so you much so for much. taking our email. Thank Thanks you. a lot.